everybody. I am Laura Rousseau. I am uh, at the School of Economics and Finance at the University of Witwatersrand. Um, so what I want to do today is to provide an economic perspective on the ban of alcohol sales in South Africa during the COVID-2019 lockdown. Um, and I'm going to be drawing largely from available um, and published literature sources. So when South Africa announced the lockdown on the 27th of March, um, it was um, announced that there, there will also be a ban on the sale of alcohol. Um, at this point, I was quite unclear what the rationale was for the ban. And most likely, it's because South Africa is a nation of heavy drinkers and alcohol lowers inhibitions, which may result in a more risky and potentially reckless behavior. So the ban may have been a way to prevent uh, drunken fights, reduce domestic violence, stop drunk driving, and eliminate weekend binge drinking, thereby um, improving social distancing. So although it's not clear uh, whether it was part of the initial intention, it's likely that one of the current rationales for sustaining the alcohol ban is to create space in the hospitals and clinics for incoming COVID patients once in the infection hospitalization rates start to increase as has been projected. Um, to consider the economic perspective, it's also really important to look at what alcohol consumption looked like in South Africa before the lockdown. So in 2014-2015, about 33.1% of all South Africans uh, self-reported consuming any form of alcohol. Of these 33%, 43% consumed uh, are considered binge drinkers, where a binge drinker in this instance is classified as somebody um, drinking more than five drinks on a standard drinking day. Um, as you can see, there's also large gender differences with males self-reporting higher levels of, uh, of drinking and binge drinking. Um, as Velias and Van Velbeek point out, the authors of this analysis, uh, it's that these, since these figures are self-reported, they're also highly likely to be underreported. Um, another factor to consider, and although I don't show it here, is the fact that uh, beer is actually the most popular drink in South Africa. In an analysis of the economics of alcohol use in South Africa, uh, researchers Evan, von, Evan Blitcher and Corne van Volbeek discern that about 55% to 60% of recorded pure alcohol in South Africa is consumed in the form of beer. Um, if we want to see how South Africa compares globally and to the rest of the continent, we can look at the total alcohol per capita consumed for adults aged 15 and older, um, as reported by the World Health Org Organization. So what this map shows is that uh, it categorizes countries by their uh, liters of pure alcohol consumed um, uh, per capita, per person, with lighter shades showing lower levels of consumption per capita and darker uh, shades showing higher consumption per capita. It shows that in 2016, um, South Africans aged 15 and older um, consumed uh, on average 7.5 to 9.9 but 9.9 .9 liters of alcohol um, per person. So although this is, when we compare it to the other soccer countries, it's similar levels of consumption, but when we compared it to the rest of the continent, so the rest of uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and Northern Africa, um, South Africans com consume relatively high levels of alcohol um, uh, per capita. It's also really important to consider the consequences and context of heavy episodic alcohol consumption in South Africa. A lot of the health consequences and costs um, associated with harmful alcohol consumption is, are, is borne by the people from lower socioeconomic groups. Um, for instance, in a study done by Probst and co-authors, they estimated that approximately 62,300 adults die from alcohol-related attributable causes in South Africa during 2015, with 60% of deaths occurring in people in the lower socioeconomic status groups, compared to 15% in the higher socioeconomic status groups. They also estimated that, uh, that although people from lower socioeconomic status groups had a lower prevalence of current alcohol consumption, um, there were heavier drinking patterns among cu current drinkers. Risky alcohol consumption is also related to various social ills like violence, road traffic deaths, and crime. Um, 
Peer and co-authors are quoted as reporting that an estimated 24% of South African driver deaths and non-fatal injuries would have been prevented if drivers were not driving under the influence of alcohol. Similarly, there are reports on the high correlations between risky alcohol consumption, alcohol-related homicides and violence, alcohol-related disorders, and contributions to fetal alcohol syndrome. Um, and here I just list uh, a couple of studies that that um, that you can try to you can access to read more up more more on these um, consequences. In considering what the economic costs of the current lockdowns ban on alcohol sales will be, one needs to consider whether both we will need to consider both the contribution of alcohol sales to the economy, but also the economic uh, the costs of alcohol consumption to in individuals the government and also society as a whole. So firstly, if you look at the contributions, we should consider both the economic contribution of the alcohol industry and also the potential tax revenue from alcohol sales. Um, we know that banning the sale of alcohol will have vast consequences for alcohol manufacturers and retailers and the people they employ, especially um, seasonal workers. So Truen and, and co-authors estimated that in 2009, the manufacturing and retail of liquor, liquor contributed approximately 3.9% to South Africa's GDP. Um, government's decision to allow for the harvesting of wine grapes and to reopen to the export of uh, reopen the export of alcohol um, can to some extent help to mitigate some of the economic losses that the alcohol industry is currently incurring. Then and there are also the losses of tax revenue from alcohol sales. So although the figures are, are a bit dated by now, looking at alcohol excise tax revenue, Bletcher and Van Balbeek report that the budgeted excise tax revenue from alcohol sales in 2013 would amount to about 1.75% of South Africa's total government revenue. Um, if we look at more current estimates, uh, the National Treasury set a revenue target of 24.5 billion from the excise tax on alcoholic beverages for the 2019-2020 financial year, which is now going to be significantly lower depending on when alcohol sales uh, resume. If we want to look at the contribution of various alcoholic, alcoholic products, the, this graph looks at the real excise tax revenue from the various alcohol, like alcohol products as well as tobacco between 1910 and 2020. And 2010, uh, it is clear from the graph that beer sales, as represented by this blue line, beer being the most popular product, brings in the largest amounts of excise tax revenue. Um, okay. So although alcohol manufacturing and sales contribute significantly to the economy, it is also quite costly. Um, and so in considering the consequences of this ban, we should really also consider the vast economic costs associated with harmful alcohol use in South Africa. Um, Matsopoulos and their co-authors did a very rigorous uh, estimation of the economic costs of harmful alcohol use to South Africa. Costs include, uh, here include healthcare costs, associated with alcohol-related diseases, um, and also treatment research and prevention costs. So these would include uh, for the treatment of individuals with disorders, social costs for dependence, and costs related to research and prevention. Other costs include social welfare costs, costs associated with drunk driving. So, uh, And they point out that pedestrians, are actually, rather than drivers, are mostly likely at risk for alcohol-related traffic fatalities. Other costs include work absenteeism, so these would be six days lost uh, due to harmful alcohol consumption, uh, as well as premature mortality and morbidity resulting in productive life years lost. Um, and then also crucial to consider, and I think this is where a lot of people's mind goes when they think about uh, the, what's ha currently happening with the lockdown is, what are the costs associated with alcohol-related crimes? And here the authors distinguish between three categories. We have the costs uh, in response to alcohol-related crimes. So these would be costing police costs, public security costs, uh, costs of correctional service and justice costs, consequences of a crime, uh, which are healthcare costs, disease burdens, productivity losses, emotional costs, also the cost of foregone foreign direct investments, and these are, to a large extent, already captured in the previous categories. Um, uh, and then there's also um, 
crime anticipation costs. So expenditures on security measures such as anti-theft devices and guards. Um, crucial to consider uh, is not just the economic uh, financial costs, but also the non-financial welfare costs. And these would be costs associated with emotional pain, associated with traffic crashes and violent crime from alcohol-related uh, uh, alcohol um, uh, consequences. Um, and so when they summarize these uh, costs, they, they calculate that the total uh, total tangible and intangible costs represent approximately 10 to 12 percent of the South African GDP in 2009. Um, so that just gives you some idea of the annual economic costs that harmful alcohol, alcohol use uh, poses on South African society. And that's not to say that um, that what with the lockdown and the ban on alcohol sales, uh, that all of these costs to society will be reduced. Um, some of these costs are long term and indirect. Um, for instance, non, although not, not indirect, but, uh, non communicable diseases related to alcohol consumption are still likely to continue. Um, but it's still likely that some of the more direct immediate costs, such as, uh, the costs associated with violence, crime and traffic are likely to dissipate over the period of banning. There are also other costs, uh, we, new costs we need to consider, which aren't included in the Matsopoulos study. For instance, um, with COVID, uh, there are also alcohol-related costs, uh, like the opportunity costs of foregone healthcare that could have been allocated to treating COVID patients. Um, had the, would this healthcare be used to treat, um, alcohol-related, uh, uh, alcohol-related, uh, injuries? And so when we look, when, um, we look more broadly at what have the consequences been of, of the alcohol ban, um, or of lockdown rather, um, we've seen that the ban along with other strict policies have, has resulted in a massive decrease in serious crimes, um, as well as there's been a, a drastic decrease in trauma cases in hospitals. In one article, it's reported that the Grotesky Hospital is reported to have seen a massive drop in trauma cases from 150 patients per week to around 40 cases per week. Serious crime rates when compared to last year's are also down significantly. While Police Minister Becky Chele contributes this directly to the sales ban, it's likely to be a combination of factors that contributed to this change, including the sales ban, restrictive policies, and other restrictive policies, and also increased policing. Um, which brings me to the end and really, um, what, what, what this means going forward and what we should, the lessons we should take from this. And then going forward, I really think in considering the effectiveness of the ban and whether or not to lift it, it'll be crucial to disentangle and establish the two contributing factors to these changes in, in outcomes in society. As mentioned, uh, there have been decrease in trauma crisis in hospitals. And these could be the result of the alcohol ban, but there should also be, it could also be the result of various other policies in place. Um, this ban provides an opportunity to assess to what extent harmful alcohol consumption affects South Africans and the potential policy that could be implemented after lockdown. Um, but in order to do that, we need to apply empirical rigor and fully gauge the costs, consequences and externalities of these changes. For the moment, we should also consider whether a ban is truly the best option, given its potential economic consequences, um, or whether there is a more nuanced approach to alcohol sales and whether or not this would be more appropriate. One option may be a staggered, may be staggered or limited sales, although the potential consequences and externalities of this need to be carefully considered. As mentioned, uh, the government's decision to allow the harvesting of wine grapes and to reopen the export of uh, of alcohol can really help to mitigate some of the economic losses to the alcohol industry. So that's one nuanced policy that might have been more helpful. Also con crucial to consider is the effect of this ban on illicit trade. So there exists a large economic demand for alcohol in South Africa. And so a ban will not necessarily stop the sale of alcohol products, not legally anyway. It's possible to, uh, that a complete ban of alcohol sales might fuel an illicit market for these products. An illicit market that is both unregulated and untaxed. So if this is the case, a ban could inadvertently fuel organized crime 
Uh, and while at the same time, unregulated and unchecked alcohol products may in itself pose, pose um, health risks. Um, finally, uh, and uh, the key point to take away from all of this is, although we've seen these um, intermediate outcomes, it's crucial to realize that the ban doesn't necessarily address the root cause of why South Africans participate so heavily in binge shrinking or why South Africa has such a high incidence of violence and violent crimes. Um, in thinking beyond the lockdown, these, uh, the, the root causes of these, uh, these outcomes really need to be considered. And it's crucial to think of potential structural changes to, to address uh, these root causes. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you for listening, uh, and I hope this was useful.